what is up everybody so we got a few free minutes here and i did not have a video for this week i am down to the wire uh, it's been raining cats and dogs all week long and lake is getting really muddy so i was scrambling to get something done here at the last minute the night before ran out with my man child here and uh we're gonna see if we can catch some fish we're gonna try to catch some sand bass channel cat i don't know what we're gonna catch or what we're gonna try to catch don't have a lot of time running out of daylight but we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens here there we go just a baby She's in there, Jumpy McGillicuddy. <laughs> Swear to God. Oh. Getting a little bigger. Turn the camera on. <laughs> there we go. Another baby. <laughs> Why are you laughing at <laughs> It's just funny the way you're sitting there hook. Every time you do this, like you might throw that rod at you. So our, our sand bass have been really, really scattered um, for the last several weeks. They haven't really moved into their uh, late spring, summer pattern yet. Really, we'll kind of find them stacked up for two or three days and then they just kind of disappear and they're everywhere. We've had a ton of rain last week there's a lot of fresh water coming in the lake and they're letting the water out as well, which always kind of complicates things and makes fishing a little bit tougher. I've just been driving around on my graph looking for fish and um, haven't seen any like real big concentrations of sand bass, just little bitty pods of them. And usually by the time I uh, get my trolling motor in the water and spot lock, they're gone. So. What we're doing is we're just kind of fishing in those places uh, where I marked fish. I'm still watching my graph, seeing if they can kind of, if they show back up again. And uh, we're just kind of catching a little bitty stragglers at this point. Um, catching fish, which I guess is a plus, but certainly not the quality of fish that I would prefer to catch, uh, especially when fishing for uh, sand bass like this. If you're not catching good, good fish, it can be... Uh, little bit boring just because they're not real big fish to begin with and uh, I'm going to show you here in a minute I'm going to drive around and look at a couple more places see if we can find some sand bass if we don't find some pretty quick uh, then I'm going to see if we can catch some channel cat we keep running into these little pods of fish I'm going to show you right here keep running into these shad it's like they're trying to surface and, and like the sand bass are trying to school but they just don't get going all the way. I'll show you here in just a minute, uh, towards the end of this video, what that incredibly annoying noise is that you're hearing uh, on this video. Talk a little bit more about what it is, why I'm using it. But again, I'm gonna drive around a little bit more, see if I can find some more uh, white bass, hopefully some better numbers. If we don't find some pretty quick, we may try to catch a few channel cat real quick before we lose our daylight. So. Let me get back out and see if I can find some more. Dad backlashed the reel. I'm sorry. It was 100% not me. The joys of having a father that carries a camera around all the time when you're fishing is all this embarrassing stuff gets caught on video.
Maybe they are. Babies. Swing and a miss. Oh yeah, that's a little bit better one, not a lot, we have a ton of channel catfish in our Texas lakes and there's just no size to them at all, you can catch some, some of the lakes that that don't have blue cat um, have bigger channel catfish in them but you can come out and catch when they're really biting good it's nothing to catch a hundred like this you know 12 to 16 inches long but they're just not any size to them and uh, I always Every time I do videos, you know, catching these eater fish, I always have these people as, oh, you know, well, you need to catch big fish. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, I don't fish for big fish all year round. And uh, being a guide, you know, I have a ton of people that they don't care anything about catching big fish. And there's a lot of people out there that watch my videos that would rather go out and catch fish just like that than they would catch big fish. So I have to be able to do, you know, a little bit of everything to be able to, to stay busy as a guide, catch numbers and size and channel cat and blue cat and flathead and white bass and you know, you name it. Sometimes this time of year, the blue cat are on their spawn and fish, I missed that when I was busy messing with my GoPro. Um, you know, you, you gotta throw all the stops out sometimes to be able to put fish in the boat and, you know, do whatever's gonna work. See that fish messing with that bait? little bitty one. One thing about fishing this punch bait, this is, what is this? this is CJ's. I just, I went to the store and, and bought first thing they had because I was pretty much out of punch bait. There's a lot of good ones out there. But regardless of what kind of bait you're using, what brand, um, this punch bait, you wanna make sure you keep that hook baited up good. Always get good wad of bait on there. Every time you throw it in the water, that helps get that smell in the water. Starts drawing those fish in. Usually the more you fish, you know, the more they come in. That scent starts to dissipate in the water and starts to draw them in and you'll start to catch more and more. So you don't want to be stingy with it. You want to make sure that you keep lots of bait on there and, and really load that hook up. One thing, if you're going to fish like this, like I said, you'll catch more fish if you hold the fishing rod in your hand. And if you notice, we got our rod tips pointed all the way down at the water. And um, that is a whole lot easier than holding them up in the air and feeling for those fish because we're just watching the bobbers and it also uh, keeping that rod tip down like this it gives you a lot more leverage so you can you can set that hook a whole lot easier with it down and when the wind's blowing there's not much wind out here at all right now most of of the water movement that we've got is just from the boat traffic back behind us but when the wind's blowing, if you keep that rod tip down, it'll help you keep that line tied as well. There we go. Oh, it came off. What are you doing? I can't get any bait to stick on there. 
those size fish right there they will tear you up those little fins they're hard to hold on to because they're so small and slick and those little fins are so sharp and uh, man they'll they'll get away from you and run that fin right through your hand before you even knew what hit you Glad I didn't go on that one any harder. Somebody would have had that one in the face. A little bit better fish, but I tell you, that dude, man, he just barely hit it. Best one so far. Stopped and tried that last place. Didn't do very well, uh, or I didn't do any good at all. We didn't get, even get bit. With all this water we've got coming in, the, the mud is about three quarters of the way through the lake. So the upper end of the lake is super, super muddy. Visibility is absolutely zero. But when you get down further, it, down the lake where I was fishing for white bass, the water's still pretty clear. It hadn't muddied up yet. And uh, the the way that I was trying to fish for channel catfish when I moved that last time really requires visibility for them to be able to see. Just didn't work. So we just gave it two or three minutes, didn't get bit. So we rolled out of there. I want to show you real quick uh, what that was that was making all the racket when I was fishing for white bass, sand bass. Um, is this device here that I've got on the floor. It's called a thumper. Now, I've been fishing for years for white bass. Um, you may have seen if you fish for white bass or striper, uh, see people slapping the water with fishing rods or, or using splasher props. Um, and then a lot of times you'll see people uh, beating on the boat with a mallet or hitting the boat with their hand like this or banging the floor of the boat with a fishing rod. I've done all those. They all work um, to hold the sand bass or striped bass, hybrids, whatever, up underneath your boat. Basically what that does is it mimics uh, the sound of a uh, school of bait fish and uh, fish feeding on those schools of bait fish. So if you're in a good concentration of fish, um, it will hold those fish underneath the boat. And um, I just got this device uh, today actually it just showed up what i was trying to do the reason i bought it is because when i'm fishing for sand bass and i've got four or six clients in the boat uh, it's difficult for me to to beat on the boat and try to hold those fish under the boat when they're real scattered and uh, manage fishing rods and take fish off the hooks and all those things but you probably know if you've been watching my videos for a while that I'm fascinated uh, with sound and fish and how fish react to sound. And uh, that's what led me to um, working with Whisker Seeker Tackle on the Versa Rattle Catfish Rig Rattles. And I got this specifically because I wanted to use it for white bass, but I also wanted to experiment uh, with catfish and how they would respond to this because I have some theories whether or not they're true or not, who knows, but they're theories at this point. This device, so it's all built into this little box here. Again, this is Thump em Up Fishing that manufactures this. They're here in the DFW area. Uh, I'll put a link down below to their information. But basically, I've got this plugged into the 12 volt outlet on my boat, and I've got a little remote control here to control the power. So rather than 
beating on the boat with a fishing rod. Let me turn that off. So rather than beating on the boat with a fishing rod or, um, you know, uh, using a mallet or anything like that, this basically just, it's got a motor built into it. So it does that for you. And uh, it's a madhouse down here. So it does that for you, keeps your hands free uh, so I can deal with fish. And like I said, I've just been kind of experimenting with it today. Wanted to watch my graph, just kind of see what was going on when I turned this thing on and off. I'm gonna be messing around with this some more uh, when I'm doing uh, white bass uh, fishing. Don't know if I'll be doing a lot of filming with it. We'll just have to see. It's pretty annoying having this going on in the background. Um, I know uh, it's probably going to be super annoying on video. But anyway, so this has just got this little remote. You can turn it on. It's got a speed adjustment. So you can make those adjustments. And that sound carries through the water. Again, it mimics uh, bait fish and fish schooling and feeding on those bait fish. It's all sorts of science behind it. I know the basics of beating on the boat work. It's been proven time and time again. You go on any guide boat that fishes for white bass or striped bass, you'll see them tapping on the boat like this or doing something to that effect. Uh, pretty common, but that's what that noise was in the background. I'm gonna get the boat uh, put away here, go grab some dinner. I know this has been a crazy video all over the place with the white bass and channel cat, but sometimes it's a grind, man. If you could just go out, whack them and stack them every time. The morning bite right now is hot and the afternoon bite's been a little bit tough. With all this water coming in, lake getting muddy, that may change, it may be tough. Uh, morning bite here in the very very near future so we'll just see what happens but I've got an absolute zoo going on here behind me so I'm going to get out of here and uh, I'll be back next week uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button subscribe hit that bell notification icon until next time I'm Chad Ferguson catfishedge.com and that is Backlash Willie up there messing with his phone Backlash Willie, that's his new nickname.